everybody. Welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this is part three of our new little mini series, Studio One version six, my new favorite workflow features. If you have not seen part one and part two, link will be in the description box below. I got a specific playlist for Studio One version six. So check out those videos as it'll help you learn about all my favorite features in Studio One version six. Studio One version six, in my opinion, is the most substantial upgrade they've had in a long, long, long time, especially for guys like me and for guys and gals like you that are mostly into mixing these little workflow enhancements you're really going to love. I guarantee it. Now, if you're new to Studio One version six or Studio One in general, and this is the first time you're here uh, hanging out with good old Uncle Dave, and you want some help getting up and running in Studio One, version six very, very quickly with no fuss and no muss, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com because I have three brand new training courses that released the day that Studio One Six got released. Recording in Studio One Made Easy, mixing in Studio One Made Easy, and the pre is Studio One Beginner's Guide, all for version six. So whether you're upgrading from version four or five to version six and you want a beginner's guide on how to get around in Studio One, or if you're especially if you're someone new to Studio One for the first time, stop searching all over YouTube. I know you came here through YouTube, but stop. After this video, go to Home Recording Made Easy, check out those three courses, and if you're brand new to Studio One, the Studio One Beginner's Guide has helped tens of thousands of people get up and running in Studio One with no fuss and no muss. Make sure you check all the links in the description box below. Let's head on here into Studio One. Let's pick up here in part three. Now, part three, this is probably my favorite features. My favorite. Out of all the ones I've shown you, these are the ones that I think are most helpful and ones that I've personally been asking PreSonus to put in here for a long time. We're going to talk about the sends and sending sends and sends and sends. That's what we're going to do, sends. Check this out. So over here in brown, we got a three brown tracks here, four brown tracks. They are drums, and they are going to a drum we have a drum in the next that in blue, we have our drum reverb and effects channel here with our good old little trusty PreSonus room reverb. Now, say I want to send my snare drum to that drum reverb. Okay, come over here to send. We're going to hit the plus drum verb. Cool. You've always been able to do that. A couple of things that I love about this Studio One version six, and I've personally been asking for this. See this little send level here? You have to left click and drag it. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I hated this, hate this. All my laptop users out there with a tiny little screen, you have to grab the little slider, move it back and forth. It is insane. Studio, Studio One, PreSonus fixed this. Check this out. If I just double click on it, Whoa, now we got a bigger window here to move, which is helpful, right? And you can also go pre-fader, post-fader, pre-fader, post-fader, pre-fader, post-fader. That's helpful. That's cool. I like that. That's pretty nice. But here's something even better than that. I'm going to click off of this for a second. So we go back to our little thing. Let's say we're also going to send our rack toms. We're going to send that over to our drum verb. And then let's say we're going to send our overheads to our drum verb, and we don't have to set all these little dopey sliders. Watch this, they added a new thing called fader flip. That's feature number two in this video that I really love. This is my favorite feature by far. A Couple of ways you can do it. You can right click on any one of these and go to flip faders, and now all the faders turn green. And the ones that are highlighted now become your send levels. Thank you. For the love of God, PreSonus for adding this. This is something that I've been asking for for a long time, and I know a lot of you have been asking for it too. That's why it's here, because they listen to their users. I know I'm not the only one that said I'm tired of grabbing this little slider and moving it. Fader flip, right? If you want to get rid of fader flip, just re-right click, turn off fader flip, it goes back to your volume sliders. That's one way to do it. Second way to do it is come over here to the left-hand side of the console, click on this activate fader flip button. That'll do it as well. Cool, right? And you can click off of it and it'll go back. But even that I don't like because it's click, 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 click. Good old Uncle Dave here actually turned fader flip into a keyboard shortcut, the letter F for fader on my keyboard. Look at that. Look at that. Keyboard shortcuts, studio one preferences. If you're on a PC, 
you want to go over to Studio One over here and go to Options. Right? I think it's in here. Isn't it in here? Preferences. <laughs> right? Locations. I always forget. It's been a long time. I'm sorry. General keyboard shortcuts. Here it is. Console activate fader flip. I programmed it to the letter F on my keyboard and you could do the same thing. Doesn't have to be letter F. Could be any key. But now I can easily fader flip. That is my favorite feature in Studio One version 6. I would upgrade to that for that one feature alone. And I kid you not. The, I hate using these little dumb little, little sliders. This is wonderful. Thank you, PreSonus, for putting that in. That is awesome. Here's another awesome feature in this whole fader send thing, which I really like. And this will be the last one for this video. If we were to drop down this little triangle here, look at this little choice here, lock pan to channel. What does that mean? That means, let's say you have your rack tom panned a little bit over to the left. Now it's also going to pan the send to the left. It used to be. Watch how ridiculous this used to be. Turn that off. See this other little slider under here? You had to manually move it. You had to manually move that, that send level, the panning of the send level. Oh, my goodness. You know, you're working on a laptop. How in the world do you ever do that? Just lock it. Now it's locked. So that re that that uh, drum that tom being sent to that reverb is the panning is going to follow. Okay, that's wonderful. Not only for sending it to reverb, if you're running parallel compression tracks, say you have a parallel compression and you're running your drums to a parallel crush bus, you want to follow the panning when you send it. That's awesome. Thank you, PreSonus, for adding that. That's my second favorite feature. And last but certainly not least, if you look at our effects channel here, look what we have now: send levels. The effects channels in the past never had a send. That's why I never used to use effects channels. I would always use bus channels instead because they virtually do the same thing. But effects channels, now we can send our effects to another effect. Where would this be handy? Vocals. I will use a delay and then a couple of different reverbs. Now I can send my lead vocal to my delay, let's say is my first effect, and then I can send that delay to a reverb and then that reverb to another reverb and that reverb to another reverb if you wanted to. So I don't have to have multiple sends on the individual track. I can send effect to another effect. Again, long requested feature, something I know I've been asking for for a long time. So I'm so happy to see that in version six. So the way we're dealing with the send levels and the way we use sends have been greatly, greatly improved. And when you're working on a large session and mixing, this is a huge uh, workflow enhancement, a huge time saver. So I know I'm being a little dramatic here, but I'm really, really happy that they did this. And I think you ought to check that out if you've never checked out those things before. So that's all we're going to talk about in this video, part three. Check out the send levels. Check out these new features in Studio One. If you want to see my other videos about Studio One version six, check the playlist in the description box below. And last but certainly not least, once again, if you're new to Studio One, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Check out those three courses I told you about at the beginning of the video. It is going to save you time, time, time getting up and running in Studio One, especially version six, quickly with no fuss and no muss. And until the next video, where we talk about more features that I love about Studio One version six, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching me today, everybody, and I'll see you guys really soon.